I am continuing in our hope series. Um, and as I said to you at the start of uh, this series, this is going to run all the way up into Easter Sunday, um, which is a wonderful way to celebrate the hope that we have in our risen Lord and that we get to be with him for eternity. Um, and uh, over the course of the next few weeks, I'm pleased to say you will have the blessing and the benefit of other people than just me preaching and speaking on this topic. We've got some wonderful speakers lined up and we're going to um, dive into the promises of God and therefore what we can have hope in. And so really these first three weeks have been a bit of an introduction for the series. The first week, if you missed it, was outlining the what and the why of hope. Uh, why do we need hope and what is biblical hope? And if you missed that, you can catch up uh, online. And last week, I talked about uh, hope changes everything. And I looked at what are the benefits of walking in a biblical hope. And uh, this week, we are looking in the question of how we walk in hope, walking in hope. And I've touched on this a little bit on the previous two weeks, but I want to dive specifically into the question of uh, how do we actually walk in biblical hope? How do we make it a, a more of a, a lifestyle that we can cultivate and that we can walk in hope? Because I don't know about you, but I find that a challenge personally. Um, and I really have been blessed and benefited by the study that I've uh, put into this series um, because certainly I feel like I'm in a season where I need a lot of hope. And maybe you come to church this morning saying, hope, yeah, I am desperate in need of hope, Mark. And I want to reference what has become and is the anchor text for this series, and it's in Romans 12, 12. It'll be on the screen behind me and on your device at uh, home. It'll be for, online for you as well. This is the Apostle Paul, and he is writing to the church in Rome, and he's talking about what it means to be a true Christian. In other words, what marks out somebody that is walking with Jesus? Because who knows that being a Christian isn't about signing on the dotted line. It's not about inheriting a faith from your parents. It is a personal decision to walk with Jesus. And so Paul is saying this, rejoice in hope. Be patient in tribulation and be constant in prayer. And as I said, I believe that this is a verse for us as a church this year. And this is certainly the verse for me this year. Three very important pointers of how we uh, walk with Jesus. Rejoice in hope. Uh, be patient in tribulation. In other words, you will face many trials and troubles, as Jesus said. The gospel of Jesus isn't a gospel of wealth and health and everything will be fine. The gospel of Jesus is that you will go through troubles and you can have victory through them. But whether it's good or bad, you can have a constant hope and peace in Jesus. That's, that's the gospel message. Uh, be patient and be constant, should I say, in prayer. Everything should undergird what we do in prayer. And this has been a very personal challenge to me to say, you know what? I am not praying enough. The pastor is not praying enough. I can admit it. I need to pray more. I need to be undergirding all that the Lord's called me to do, my family, my friends, my, my job. Everything needs to be undergirded and being built on prayer. And so rejoice in hope, be patient in tribulation, be constant in prayer. So let's dive into how we can uh, rejoice in hope. How do we walk in hope? Um, and as I said last week, um, hope is not the biblical hope that we looked at and as way of a recap, biblical hope is uh, being rooted in the promises of God and the promise keeper. It's not a hope based on wishful thinking that circumstances will align up. You know, I hope that I win the lottery or <clears throat> I hope that the weather's good. You know, this is not biblical hope. These things will be dashed. And I said to you, there is a link between what you trust in and, and therefore where your hope is. What you'll find is that whatever you put your trust in is the thing that you have your hope in. If you put your trust in your finances, what you'll find is, is that your hope is in money. And so biblical hope is recognising that as we put our trust in him for all things, then we can walk in the hope that the promises he gives to us. And so the thing about hope is that it's not a passive thing that it, from, by osmosis that you lie on your sofa and say, all right, life is rubbish. Can I have uh, an injection of hope, please, God? Lovely though that would be, and much easier would it be, 
That's not how the Bible talks about hope because hope is part of our walk with Jesus and requires us to make a decision to trust in him for all things. And then as we do that, as we make that first step, by the power of his Holy Spirit, he helps us walk in that and we walk in the hope that comes from him. So I wanna look at how we make that walk. And I want to look at three areas that we can walk in to walk in hope. And the first one is this, we should walk through the pain. Walk through the pain. I talked about over the past couple of weeks the, the, the truth of that we need to be real with God. That when we talk about hope, we're not talking about ignoring the pain and saying it's okay actually. I talked about the fact that I'm quite an optimistic guy. You know, the glass is always half full for me. Um, but the way I sometimes achieve that is by ignoring the reality of the situation. I don't know if anyone's like me, but you don't put your hands up. But it's like, it's fine, it's fine, it's all good. I'll just squeeze that paint as low as I can down here so that I can believe that it's all okay. Because I just want to experience some peace. And if I can somehow manufacture good circumstances in my head, I'll be hopeful. That is not, that is a short circuit to a false kind of peace. You see, biblical hope requires us to walk through the pain and be real about it. And I, I joked last week that sometimes we come to church putting our church face on. How are you, brother or sister? I'm fine, praise God. How's your week been? Hallelujah, it's been amazing. You walk away thinking, it's been terrible. <laughs> Only they knew. And how ironic is it that of all the places that we should be real, church is one of those that we find it challenging too. But you see, throughout the Bible, we see men and women of God who are real with God, who are real with God. And last year, I did a talk entitled, uh, What to Do When Life Sucks? Or was it something like, What We, what, what we Do when, when We Are Given Lemons? It was something like that. Something like that, yes. And I took to, looked at the biblical, the place of biblical lamentations, Laments, should I say. And that's a very, sounds like a very ye oldie kind of word, lament, doesn't it? But you see, a lament, if you were to look at the dictionary, um, it means that it's a, a passionate expression of grief or sorrow. You could call it wailing. But a biblical lament, I would suggest, is more than this. It's not just a passionate expression of grief and sorrow and staying in that place. A biblical lament has a particular objective to it. You see, lamenting in the biblical sense is coming to God and talking to him about our pain and sorrow and then choosing to look to him through it and give it to him. That is what a biblical lament is. And that's what I mean by walking through the pain. It doesn't mean wallow in it. It doesn't mean ignore it. It means walk through it and give that pain to him and then fix our eyes on him. You know, the, the Psalms are a wonderful place to read biblical laments. Um, Psalm 13, verse two, let me read this. It starts this, how long? A lament can be a question. Typically, my laments are why or how? Why, Lord? Anyone's done that? Why, Lord? How long, O oh God? And the psalmist is saying, how long must I take counsel in my soul and have sorrow in my heart all the day? How long shall my enemy be exalted over me? Anyone feel like that? I'm doing everything you've asked me to do, Lord. I'm walking in the truth that you've laid before me. I'm choosing to make sacrifices for your truth and yet my neighbour over there doesn't even know you has got an easy life and he's laughing at me. How long, oh Lord? Because right now I'm feeling hopeless, oh God. This is a biblical lament and I've done so much lamenting this week, I have to tell you. You'll be pleased to know the pastor's practised this this week. But I'm talking from experience. And I want, I want you to know that God doesn't mind hearing it. In fact, he wants to hear how you feel. Our God is a relational God. It's not a force. God is not an entity. God is a person. 
And we have been created in his image. God has emotions too. And he is inviting us to be real with him. The psalmist didn't write this, and by verse 3, the psalmist had obliterated because God had smiked him down. That's not what happened. And it's not about just being angry for the sake of anger. And it's not about wallowing it. I, I actually, um, this, this week, caught myself lamenting, wailing, not physically, but in my heart. And I recognized what happened in that moment, listen, is I let the pain take me on a walk. I didn't walk through the pain myself. Now, what do I mean by that? I mean this, that sometimes what can happen is in the pain, in the hopelessness, we let the pain tell us a story about where it's going to lead us to. That's the pain taking you for a walk. We're supposed to walk through it. Well, it's bad now. It's only going to get worse. You think that was silly that you said. You think they think that. They think worse than that. Who knows the battlefield is in the mind? And so we have to take control and we turn the pain and rather than let the pain walk us, we then walk through the pain and we share that with God and we bring it to God. And then this is what we do. We turn the pain, the questions, into a request. Let's continue to read what the psalmist wrote in verse three. Listen, he's done the, the pain. He's, he's been real with God. Then he says this, consider and answer me. O Lord, my God, light up my eyes, lest I sleep the sleep of death. In other words, I've just told you, God, what is happening. Now, would you do this for me? Would you consider what I have said? And would you answer my request, Lord God? Would you light up my eyes? Would you let me sleep in peace? Do you see what's happening here? You're now, take, you're now walking through the pain and you're in this moment, you're choosing to trust in God and not the situation. As I said last week, it's about looking at the pain and then looking up to him. And then you move from turn it to a request. And I love Psalm 5 and 6. This is a wonderful psalm to meditate on and as a biblical model for how we can walk through the pain. Verse 5 and 6, but, I love a but. Nevertheless, in spite of this, but I have trusted in your steadfast joy. In spite of the pain that I'm feeling, in spite of the reality that's painful, I will make a choice, God, to trust in you. You see, a biblical lament will always head in that direction to a declaration that as for me and my house, we're gonna praise the Lord. That in my life, I'm gonna to get to this point of walking through the pain and then trusting you, God, and declaring that right now. And then it says this, my heart shall rejoice in your salvation. Where else did we hear rejoice? Rejoice in hope. Are you seeing this, the, the, the progress of walking through the pain? It's about starting to be real with God, with our questions. It's then making a decision to trust him and then praise him. And I want to say that if you are here this morning, you've started on this series and say, I want to rejoice in hope. I want to tell you, that means you're going to have to get real with your stuff. You can't short circuit that. I'm sorry. You're going to have to get real. And it's in that process of being real that God then ministers to our heart, pours out his peace. Maybe there's healing there. Maybe there's hurts and wounds. Maybe we're operating out of insecurities because of words that people have spoken over us. Maybe it's to do with our, our, our natural mother and father and the way uh, we grew up. Maybe that's impacted how we see the world. Whatever it might be, in the place of a biblical lament, as we make the choice to walk through it and be real about it, we are coming in humility and he can heal us in that place. Are you with me? And we all get it. Thank you for that, Sally. Bless you, sister. <laughs> so the first thing I want to tell you is this. 
If you want to rejoice in hope, be real about the hopelessness and walk through the pain. Don't let the pain walk you because it will. It will. Number two, we've only got three this morning. Happy days. Here's the other, another, the other one. Walk with others. You want to walk in biblical hope? Hope, 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 hope. Walk with others. And I want to say, that it, it's, doing life with one another is so important. In fact, God has created us to. God, is, I said this, God is a relational God. And he's created us to be relational. And when Jesus died on the cross, he died so we could have relationship with our Father and relationship with one another. Relationship with God and relationship with one another. That's why Jesus died on the cross. And fellowship, you've, who's heard that word fellowship? I mean, when I was growing up, we used to have fellowship groups at church. I don't think we call them these things anymore, do we? But fellowship is an important word. It's not just an old word that you can um, swap out for connection or friendship. There is something weighty about the word fellowship. And I want to say that fellowship is more than just friendship, although it contains friendship. It is about walking out our lives with fellow believers, fellow brothers and sisters, all purchased by the blood of Jesus. You know that we're family, right? Like, that's not a glib word to make us feel warm and cosy. It's a biblical truth that we are brothers and sisters in Christ. That the blood that has purchased me and made me a child of God is the same blood that's purchased you and made you a child of God. And so we're brothers and sisters. And um, it, Paul in Romans 12, verse 10, in fact, in the same chapter, in a few, two verses before, it says, be devoted to one another in love. Honour one another above yourselves. That's hard. But that's what it means to have fellowship. The hardest thing I've ever done in my life is loving other people. I'm sure that says more about me than you, but love is difficult. Let's be real. And I can just about love people, but honour one another above yourselves. I mean, that is a place of sacrifice and humility. And yet that is what fellowship is about. You know, the body of Christ is a beautiful thing. It is a beautiful thing. And so I want to tell you, you need other people in your life. If you want to walk in hope, you need other people with you to have fellowship with and to do life together. The enemy wants nothing more than to isolate you. You know, the biggest lie, one of the biggest lies at the moment is you can do church on ho at home on, on your own. And I said this a couple of weeks ago, and I say this lovingly to those that are watching online. Listen, we know that many of you watch online because you're unable to get to the building, or you know, whether that be health issues or whatever it might be. We know many of you are uh, window shopping. And that sounds like a funny phrase, isn't it? But I've heard about this church. Let me check them out on YouTube. That's a great thing. I hope you're being blessed by it. And some of you can't connect where you are locally, and so uh, we know that we reach across the globe, and that's wonderful. But if you're there at home, and you're like, well, this is more comfortable for me, and it means I can do that in the afternoon, and it means I don't have to get in the car, and it means this, that, and the other, I want to tell you, that's not church. That's just watching content online, and God willing, it's great content that you're being blessed by the Word and worship. But church is about His people, Church isn't a structure of programs. Church isn't a building. Church is the body of Christ. And so if you want to walk with others, you need to come to church. In other words, you need to be with one another. You need to love one another practically by serving one another. You need to be here for one another to say, how are you doing? Can we pray together? That is what church is. And I laid down a challenge a couple of weeks ago saying, I want this to be a year where we're committed to coming to church. That we say, you know what, Lord, I'm not going to be lazy with you. I'm going to prioritise running into your sanctuary to worship you and to be with your body. I believe that is the challenge of our modern day. And so fellowship is about joining and being together and you know, there's a beautiful picture of what it means to do life together and encouraging one another in um, Exodus when um, the Israelites are fighting the Amaleks and Moses is ordered to kind of put his staff up and as long as his staff is up, some of you recall this story, the Israelites are winning, but the moment the staff goes down, they don't. 
And I'm just going to read this from the Message Bible, Exodus 17, 10 to 13. Joshua did what Moses ordered, uh, ordered in order to fight Amalek. And Moses, Aaron, and Hur went to the top of the hill. It turned out that whenever Moses raised his hands, Israel was winning. But whenever he lowered his hands, Amalek was winning. But Moses' hands got tired. I mean, life is tiring. So they got a stone and they set it under him. He sat on it and Aaron and Hur held up his hands, one on each side. So his hands remained steady until the sun went down. Joshua defeated Amalek and its army in battle. I think that is a beautiful picture of what it means to have fellowship with one another. We're all called in this spiritual battle that we're in. Who knows that? We all got our part to play, but just like Moses, sometimes we lose our strength and our arms drop. And we look around and think, if only someone could help me put my arms back up. That's fellowship. Who is around you that needs you to say, you know what, I'm, I know it's tough, but I'm here for you. Let's pray about this together. Tell me how you're feeling. Let me hold your hands up for you. Do you need a stone to sit on? That's what it means to have fellowship. You know, it says in Galatians that we are to serve one another. In James, that we are to pray for one another. In Romans, it says to build one another up. This is the key, keys of fellowship. And it is in that place that you can speak hope into other people. I have been, I'm sure you have been in those situations where everything looks hopeless and a brother or sister in Christ has said to me, Mark, I know you can't see it right now, but I want to tell you there is hope because God has got you right now. God loves you. You know, sometimes we're too weak to even be able to say that God's got it. We're so battered by life. We're so, uh, we've been so real here. I hope you don't mind us being real, right? But you know, we're in that place and we feel battered and we just need a brother or sister in Christ say, it's gonna be okay. You know, God says this. God, God says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. And so I wanna say this, we need fellowship. Um, we've got our new um, booklets, um, which I, hope, I know that many who are new would have got these in the welcome bag. There's one for serving, uh, one for giving. Uh, this one is how, we jo how you join. Now, we don't have a formal membership. Um, we, we don't have that structure, unlike other denominations that may do. We don't have a formal membership. But for us, membership does mean a commitment to being part of the church. And can I just encourage you, if you, if you're, if you haven't had one of these, and you, maybe you've been at church for many, many years, can you pick up one of these and have a read? Because I think it does a great job of articulating what it means to be church here at Verso Church. The first thing is this. Come along on a Sunday. Like, you can't be part of this church unless you're coming along on a Sunday. Now, let, hear my heart. I'm not saying that there are going to be occasions where you can't make a Sunday, you've got a family. I'm, you know, I'm not going to be taking the register, that's what I'm saying. And life happens and, and all that. So let's have some, you know, let's understand that. I hope you heard my heart earlier. I'm talking about where our heart attitude is in terms of how we deal with God. But come along to a Sunday, whether it's the 9.30, 11.30 or the... Well done, 6.30. And we're going to be starting that tonight, as you heard, once a month, but we're looking, God willing, to make that a weekly thing. So there really is a lot of options there. Would you agree? Number two, join a Verso group. Like, coming to church isn't just about a Sunday thing. It's about doing life with people through the week. We have loads of Verso groups, okay? Get connected. If you're not in a group, and you know, I've got to tell you, the percentage of people that come to our church that is in a group is very low. And I know it's difficult committing to something like that. I get that. But I want to challenge us all, and me too. Where's our priority in life? And what's God called you? Maybe God's called you to walk alongside others. Maybe God's placed in you a, the, the gift of being a hope giver. Now, you can get on our website, pick a day, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, whatever day it is, and you'll see all the groups that we run. Go to verso.church forward slash groups. And if you can't find a group, email the office, office at verso.church. Or find Trevor, who heads up our pastoral and discipleship, or myself, or any of the other staff. But I really want to push this point. Life, doing life together, having fellowship, isn't just about a Sunday thing. Whether it's the business club on a Sunday night, or it's another group, can I challenge you right now, if you're not in a group, 
Ask yourself the question, is this the year that I'm gonna get part of a Verso group? Other things, three, find somewhere to serve. You know, where are you serving? If you're not serving, then we know that many find it difficult to commit or maybe you've just joined us, that's fine. But at some point in our journey, we need to say, listen, I'm not consuming church, I'm doing church. Big difference. I don't wanna come and consume church, I wanna do church, I wanna be church. And if you're here and this is your home, then you should be being church with one another. And you know, we have... Uh, eight morning services a month. Why not serve on one out of eight? That's not a lot, really. Um, welcome team, hospitality team, had up by Anne Lee. They do an amazing job um, with the, the refreshments and the stewards. Maybe the car parking team, maybe Ventureland, maybe Village. I mean, there are a plethora of teams that you can serve on. And if you go to verso.church, you'll find them. But if we're talking about walking in hope, you're gonna find that when you see God moving as you serve, that's gonna build your trust and your faith in God and hope will come in. And lastly, give a portion of your income regularly. Oh, the pastor's talking about money. Yeah, I am. Can he do that? Well, I guess so. It's in the Bible. You know, we're so thankful for the generosity of all those who give to Verso Vineyard Church providing us with the resources to fulfill our mission to make Jesus known. And the Bible teaches us that giving to the Lord is part of our worship to him. And we do so with thankful and grateful hearts. Part of being a member here, part of saying this is my home church, is about saying I am going to worship in this way, in this place, and I'm gonna bring to the storehouse my tithes and my offerings. All right? So that's what it means to be a member of this church. But you see, this is not rules for rules sake. These are we live and do fellowship with one another and we can walk in the blessings that God has for us. I hope you hear my heart in that. And we could probably invite many people up to, to give testimony of all these things to say, when I gave to God, this happened. When I served, I saw God move in that way. When I was in a verso group, I was going through a tough time, but they came around me. Not only did they pray for me, but they got together a rota and they provided meals for me. So we need to walk in hope by walking with others. And I know there is a challenge there for all of us. And lastly, but of course not least, walk towards Christ. We walk through the pain. We don't let the, the pain walk us. We walk with others in fellowship. And lastly, we walk towards Christ. This is a very famous two verses that I'll read to you. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 to 30, Jesus says this. Come to me. Who are you going to? I was reminded recently, uh, in fact, it was this week when I was lamenting. And there was a split thought in my mind, which is this would be so much easier to ignore it and numb the pain by having a drink or watching something, TV, watching TV. Like, you know what I mean, just zone out. There are so many numbing opportunities that we have in this world so that we can numb the pain and ignore it. But you see, and then we go to those things. We go to those things for a fix. We go to those things to make us feel better. We go to those things so we can get some hope. And what we find, and I'm sure you'll agree, is that it is momentary at best. And at worst, it's detrimental to us. But you see, Jesus says this. He gives us another alternative. Come to me. Come to me, all who labor and are heavy laden. Come to me, all who are hopeless, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and lowly in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy and my burden is light. You see, walking in hope, friends, is about walking to the one that gives us live in hope that is Jesus. You see, walking in hope is about walking towards hope himself, Jesus. I want, I want this really to be super practical for you guys. I want you to go away from this place and take something that you can try and walk in. And so I want to encourage you to walk through the pain and lament biblically. I want you to walk with others and have fellowship with one another and make that a priority for this year for you and sign up for a group and get involved in church. And number three, I want you to walk towards Christ in all things. 
And with that, I'd like us to stand as I pray. Thank you, Jesus.